everybody. Thanks for joining. We're going to get started at about 3.05, so please be patient while others are logging in. Here you We're going to get started in about two minutes, so please stand by.
Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Sorry, we just gave it a couple minutes because there were some people trying to get in, but we're all here now. Um, and You're all set to go, sir. Great. So we are here for a special reason tonight, guys. Um, we are, so first of all, you probably got an email that said that I would love to, and the company would love to feature you on our Instagram, which is an unusual email to get from us. And really, we've been motivated by changes that are happening in the company and our ability to sort of do more for you. Uh, a lot of you that are here have most likely already been tested, have worked with us on your DNA, maybe even attended a review or a program. We've had a really big change in the company where who you just heard from, Tracy Wood, has become our glorious leader. She has come and stepped in as a chief executive officer, which allows the company to flourish as a healthcare company. That's where she comes from and has done so much amazing work there, which then allows me to step back and give you more and work on things like this and you know, support you, build more programs, build more products uh, without having to deal with the sort of day-to-day -day and that healthcare company that we're becoming. So a beautiful thing happened, serendipitous, and now we're able to do more of this. So we wanted to start with you guys here today. So what are we doing? You got an email again saying, get featured on Instagram, how? We are going to challenge you to reverse your biological age and prove to us that you did the work, do a, somewhat uh, similar to what I did to drop that number down and actually be healthier on the inside. And the winner, whoever actually gets the best score, and we are going to measure this, we're going to, we're going to work deep with you guys, uh, will be featured. We want to tell your story. And there's so many people, we get messages regularly that are so inspired you know, we go speak on a podcast, a webinar somewhere, and they're like, wow, I have been stuck for so long. My family's been stuck for so long. I didn't even know that you could think about your body this way. And so we've been talking about it. And there's so many of you now that have been through these journeys. We want to share your stories. And that's what we're doing here today. So the longevity challenge, what are we talking about? What we're saying is simple. If I bring it down to technical terms, here's your DNA. Right, somewhere in here, there's a, a strand of DNA. You've seen it before, that double helix, that ladder that looks like it's twisted. It's a set of code that tells your body what to do, how to do with all the various jobs. On the ends of each DNA strand, there's a cap called a telomere. And that telomere is meant to protect your DNA from oxidation, from damage, abrasions, just like any other bumper on a vehicle or anywhere else you would find something like that. When you look at the innate physical structure, of a telomere, it looks like it's designed to last 120 years. That tells us a lot. What that tells us is that wherever you believe we came from, there's an embedded hardware that's designed to take 120 years of beating. The DNA is supposed to last that long, which means I believe that's how long we're supposed to live with good health. This is not just about lifespan, it's about health span. How do I live to 120? riding a bicycle with my grandchildren, playing soccer with my brother and sister who are also 120. And we know this to be true because people have lived to that age. There's a famous story of a French woman who was actually a, an heiress of a, a lot of wealth who decided she was just gonna enjoy her life. No stress, no problem. She had amazing relationships. And through that, she actually died at 122 and she died healthy. There's stories from South America there's stories from the blue zones. We know plenty of stories people of people living to this age and you and me and everyone here today, we are the same species, wired the same way. So in that, unless you're born with an innate genetic condition or you know hardware failure, which you would probably already know about, there's no reason we can't all do the same. It's the choices we make that take years away from that 120, right? You've been given this gift from God live to 120 and live healthily and then go back to wherever you came from. The choices we make, we, we chip those years away. And now the American average is 78. It actually dropped for the first time historically by three years. So it dropped from 78 to 75, the average life expectancy. And what we're saying is we want to challenge you to adopt some habits, work with us for the next three months. There's no, there's nothing for sale here. There's just you and us working together to implement all of what you've learned about your body and get better. And we're gonna kind of go through a journey similar to what I went through, but because we now know what to do, we're gonna compress it. And there's gonna be challenges. 
this won't be for the faint of heart. There'll be, as we go week by week, the challenges will increase. And I don't even want to tell you what the last week's challenge is, but our hopes is that by the time you get there, you're willing to do it. And you're willing to do some of the things that I've done and some of our friends in the longevity space have done to reverse their biological age. So what does that mean? So inside your cells, we know that there's DNA and we know that that DNA is constantly expressing, right? So meaning whatever input, sound, smell, fear, uh, food, whatever your body is experiencing, your genes are turning the dials on how efficiently they operate to give you exactly what you need in that moment. As an example, if you saw a tiger running towards you, your biochemistry would change. There'd be adrenaline, there'd be testosterone pumping, and you would run, right? So your body knows what to give you, and that's by turning the dials on gene expression. That process, some of you already know, is called methylation, how you methylate all these different, from removing toxins to managing gene expression to fighting inflammation. Methylation is this complex thing that does so many jobs, and that's why it's hard to understand. But this is one of the key things, managing gene expression. We have been working on, for the past few months, the ability to actually measure that. Now imagine five of us in a room, all with five different stories about how we got there. Me at 43 years old, somebody else at 50, what have I been doing for those 43 years? And what, based on my choices, do I now look like on the inside? I can tell you, when I started this journey, I was 38. You know, when we when I first started healing myself, when I first eliminated a chronic disease, one of five, and then eventually five of five, uh, I'm now 43, right? At that time, five years ago, I was told that I was biologically 43. There's different ways to measure, including the one that I'm talking about, which is the most uh, scientifically current. There, you, you, you probably heard of things like telomeres and you can measure plaque in your aorta. It's called a Doppler scan. There's different ways to understand how you've progressed biologically versus chronologically. We feel that what we now know about genetic expression is so pinpoint accurate and so current. It's based on what you're doing that it's a very good read on biological age. So at the age of 38, I was measured as 43. I had just begun my journey, started to learn, even understand that it's possible to be your own health quarterback. I didn't even know that. It was my first round about going into the healthcare system and learning that wellness and prevention isn't what they do. And I had to learn that myself. So fast forward now to when I actually am 43, and we're kind of celebrating where my chronological age meets my biological age of the past when I was told that's how old you are for real. I am now 33 on the inside. So we've measured this. Uh, I've measured it both through this method and even sort of daily to see how my habits affect uh, aortic stiffness and other daily measures that you can do uh, in, in sort of inflammatory markers. So I know, what I did was not as extreme as some of what you see online. I did not spend $2 million a year like what you see from some influencers that literally take a guy like Brian Johnson who's taking over 100 treatments a day. You know, So how do we find this middle, middle ground of things that we'll actually do, things that we can actually stick to, that are going to make a major impact? We're going to take a piece of the playbook that I ran and save some time by jumping to what works. And that's what we built. This challenge is a couple months. We're going we're gonna to run it right until the new year. And hopefully in that new year, there's going to be so many new yous, right? New versions of yourself uh, with new birthdays to celebrate. Um, and we believe that by that time, you would have gone through something that would reduce that biological age if you stick to it and work with us. Um, and we think we can also prove that through testing. So you're, you're welcome. Everybody here is welcome. There's no cost to this. This is not a product or service. This is us giving back and working with you. And what I would love to see is by the end of this, there's a thousand people enrolled. Each person lost five years. We call the Guinness Book of World Records and say that, hey, we just lost 5,000 years of life or gained, I should say, because we reversed biological age in a thousand people. That's the goal. We just want to have our community thrive. Right? Our community learn through us, do better and thrive and come out the other end of this. Like, wow, I reduced my biological age. So there is testing. You probably saw it on the slides that we're passing while you're waiting that allows you to measure. It's not necessary to measure. 
but without measuring, you won't know the data, right? So we'll, we're gonna talk about that in a second, how that all works for anyone that wants to, but let's get more into the challenge. So first of all, how do you structure something like this? And again, speaking to my experience of what I went through, what I learned, and this is well, some of the mistakes that I made, which we're gonna build into the challenge and make sure we do with you, is that all of what you go out there to learn is from some influencer, doctor, specialist, longevity guru, who is exactly where you want to be. Like, I want to be that person. And that's why I'm listening to them because obviously whatever they're saying must work because look at them, right? That's my goal. My outcome is exactly what that person looks like. Typically, when you're listening to that person, you're probably on the right track, but what they're talking about today is probably not where you're at. And this is one of the big challenges in trying to achieve longevity where people get frustrated and where people often bail out and they stop working on it or they hurt themselves, right? It's just the wrong solution. So there's phases and, uh, and I'm, again, I'm speaking to everybody at the same time. So I know you're in different parts of your journey. Some of you are just starting, some of you are far along, some of you call yourselves biohackers, right? So you're all in different stages, but in general thinking, whenever we're doing anything like this, step one is just to fix the acute problem, the terrain. We're not even thinking about reversing years and adding life. All we're thinking about is what's the pain point? And too often people jump to what supplement should I take? I need stem cells. Let me get a hyperbaric oxygen treatment therapy uh, machine, you know, without first getting the body ready to receive the benefit from what they're, what they're choosing to do. So first step, and we will work with it on this in the first couple of weeks is how do we get that acute problem out of the way? How do we get the terrain ready? And when I say terrain, we're talking about brain. We're talking about vasculature, blood flow. You know, we're talking about nutrient delivery, all of the core foundational things, metabolic health, right? Once we get those systems in check, you're then able to get into optimization territory. Optimization is, I don't have the headaches anymore. My skin isn't itchy, right? I, and I feel like that other chronic thing, it may not be gone, but it's getting better. I'm in the right direction, right? Now you can start thinking about optimizing. And this is where people jump the gun a little too fast. You got to walk before you run. When you get into optimization territory, it's still not, let me jump into the stem cells and the oxygen therapy and do all these crazy things. And even within this challenge, we're not even going to go that far because there's so many great things we can do without all that yet. Optimization territory is now I can start thinking about what am I adding? Right? I fix the acute problem. I feel I'm feeling better, or I can see that there's improvement. I'm on a path, the path that I should be, the right direction. Now I can start asking about what supplements am I supposed to take? You know, what exercises do I incorporate beyond my daily routine? Do I start weeding out relationships that are potentially harmful to me? Do I start thinking about changing where I buy my, you know, my cleaning supplies from and things that I might not do on day one? Because I've now this has become a part of who I am versus trying to dig myself out of the hole, the, the acute response. And you have to allow yourself to go through these stages so that they actually stick and you succeed, right? Third stage, again, anyone that's taking this information just for as it is and running with it on your own, great. That's why I want to run through it, but we're going to implement this in the challenge. Third stage is that biohacker, longevity, wellness person who's, I don't have the pain point anymore. I don't need medication from my doctor. I'm implementing some habits at optimal stage, optimization stage. And I think I'm going to do a little better now. You know, I, I feel good. And my friends are starting to ask me for advice and saying, hey, you look great. What happened? Then it's a true identity change. Then you get into longevity. Then you get into the things that you watched on YouTube and the podcasts you listened to. It's time for that stuff. It's time to up the game. And not only are we fixing the problem, I got rid of my eczema. I'm literally talking about me. I got rid of my psoriasis. I got rid of my migraines. I got rid of my gut dysbiosis and leaky gut. And I got rid of depression. These things were debilitating. I couldn't function on certain days. Those are gone, right? And now I'm a new version of myself with healthy terrain head to toe that can start to adopt optimization type, type tools, right? And I started to do that. I started to clean up my food, started to clean up my exercise, started to supplement a little bit. Like I'm no longer trying to mask the pain i'm now trying to get a become a better version of myself fast forward probably three years into it was the first time that i thought about myself as anyone seeking longevity 
I did, it, this wasn't day one. This wasn't day 90. This wasn't even day 180, right? This was three years into it. I started for the first time ever, a colleague referred to me as a biohacker. And I took that as, uh, you know, I was, I was timid about it. Like, no, I, I'm not a biohacker. What are you talking about? I watch biohackers on YouTube, but I'm not one. And then I realized the things that I'm doing are exactly what you would call that person, right? Uh, a longevity enthusiast, you know, a functional medicine enthusiast, a health enthusiast. That's who I became. But it took me three years to get there. And I'm not suggesting that you have to do the same because again, I was learning and failing and re and getting back up on my feet as I was going along. Having guidance can allow you to do it a lot faster, right? But go through those phases. Don't don't run, walk, uh, because once you're done, you've added decades, if not a, a decade, if not more, to your life. So take that time to do things properly to truly enjoy what you're going to create for yourself. Right. So that's kind of the, the stages that people go through uh, that you should also consider in your wellness journey. And now in the context of those stages, here's the sort of the the phase of how we bring in various parts of the body that need to be dealt with. Right. In the first place, and some of you have heard this before, and we're going to do the same today. In fact, your first challenge starts today. And I'm going to tell you what it is when we're done this call. You start with your brain. And if you're, it's it's funny because you're starting with your brain, but you're also considering that if you're going to live longer, you really have to take care of your brain. It's one thing to add years to your life, but if you don't have health in those years, what was the point of all that? And typically, the longer you live, the greater your mind has exposure to cognitive decline. In today's context where the air is polluted, the food is polluted, there's forever chemicals in the water, et cetera. So there's so many more things you have to be concerned about that all cause neural inflammation and cognitive decline. So it's very important to start here, not from the disease perspective, but from your mood perspective first to understand who you are and then start working on the disease perspective. So a lot of you have done this already, which is here's my dopamine pathways. Here's my serotonin pathways. Let's find that one thing that causes me to feel anxious, that causes me to feel depressed, that causes me to walk out of the meeting. Why is this important? If you look at the longest health study the world has ever seen, it's still being run today. It started in the 1930s and it's being run out of Harvard, Harvard University. And it's a true study into human longevity. And this is why it's been going on for so long because they're trying to truly see who makes it into those hundreds, right? And so, again, thousands of people have been through this study, and their summary, after having done this decade after decade after decade, they haven't stopped, they're still doing more, their summary was the number one thing you can focus on to have a long and healthy life, centenarian, think blue zones, is focus on the quality of your relationships. That was their conclusion. What do they mean? Well high quality relationships with less people think about the centenarian that does live in you know uh, south america and costa rica or in okinawa japan and think about their lifestyle right they have a circle of friends that they're close to uh they try and remove friction uh and they're focused on that relationship being a very important part of their day and if you take the wisdom there which is when you have bad toxic relationships and you have too many constant changes in your mood, it's a chronic stressor, right? It's a chronic stressor. Instead of having the right hormones firing and the right neurochemical levels firing and the, the lack of cortisol, which you don't want the constant trickle versus always being in a cortisol warrior state because everyone around you is raising your blood pressure, right? Two very different contexts to be in. And this is one of these silent killers that chips away at you year after year after year because it's very easy to suppress those things and there's no visceral health response most of us don't think of this as a health issue right we just think of this as a lifestyle issue or a relationship issue but it is directly amongst most things one of the highest performing health degraders right it, it will take years away from you so this is why we start with the brain today's challenge is going to be about the brain uh, and once we've understood how we think by understanding our genetics, 
we understand how we feel and re react and perceive and how the world perceives us, it becomes a lot easier to find your superpowers and focus on those, right? To find the things that you're designed to do and be that person and also understand why the friction points exist. No longer frustrated, no longer bad relationships. I just can't be in that relationship. It's not what I'm designed for, right? So that's where we start. We typically then go to chronic disease and aging. And we're going to be doing the same thing here. We're going to look at how your anti-inflammatory defenses, whether they're working or not, lead to the you know um, proliferation of inflammation and then chronic disease, right? So this is this is the second place we usually go, because obviously the reason you wanted to get your brain in check was to not get the disease, right? So starting with dementia, which is if you're crossing over from brain to to disease. It's a very easy one to look at in the context of here's all of the potential inputs that lead to neural inflammation, which is the very beginnings and root cause of plaque, amyloid plaque buildup in the brain, which then leads to that cognitive decline. There's also another way to look at it is how efficiently do you develop neural pathways, right? The, the brain drive neurotropic factor and how efficiently does your brain stay young as hardware? There's the threats and then there's the actual physical hardware that you've been gifted. So between those two things, you start to understand how to fend off disease uh, when it comes to the brain. And now that same thinking can be applied anywhere to cancer, to cardiovascular, et cetera. So the, the, this is the second place we go. And what I talked about earlier, when it comes to epigenetic testing, this really allows us to focus on where, where to prioritize. And you've already, you've already learned this in genetics. We don't speak about genetics in the context of you have an 80% chance of Alzheimer's, good luck. That's genetics 101. And there's still a lot of people out there doing that. We believe that it should be more functional, which is you have an 80% chance of Alzheimer's, priority. We're not saying you're going to be in the 80%. We're saying let's put you in the 20 that never got it. That's what we're going to do. Now that we know that this red flag is standing out and this is the priority, let's focus on this being where we do our work and putting you in the 20% that never got it because 20% didn't, right? And this is the actual data. I think it's uh, with the APOE 3.4, it's an eight to, time, eight to 10 times elevated risk. With the APOE 4.4, it's a 17 to 25 times elevated risk, right? So you get into very high numbers statistically, but it's not a 100% chance of risk, right? It's an elevated chance because your habits and genome can be aligned or misaligned. So we're gonna to start to look at some of those things also and simple things you can do to support the hardware and reduce the inflammatory load, right? And as I was uh, going to was the epigenetic test that we're gonna to talk to you about, just like the DNA allows you to prioritize, you have a bad APOE3, we need to do everything to prevent Alzheimer's. The epigenetic test is going to tell us which part of your genome is not expressing properly and what is going to be the right tool to implement to solve the problem. Is it your immune system? Is it your metabolic health and the foods that you're eating? Is it the actual gene expression and the supplementation you might require? Is it hormones, for example? So now adding another layer of data, then you'll see that the best longevity experts, you look at a guy like Peter Atia, whose book is doing really, really well right now. And he's all over the place talking about longevity. You look at Dr. Eamon, who is all over working with celebrities on the brain. You know, And you start to look at these industry leaders and what you'll see over and over and over again is testing, 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 responding to data, responding to data, responding to data. And that's what the people in the clinical world that don't succeed, don't do enough of. That's the big difference when you talk to the big leaders. There's a whole network of what's called FDN, functional, I think, functional nutritionists, um, which is flourishing right now because they have a massive focus on testing. Don't tell them what diet to have. Don't tell them what supplements to take. Test and let the test tell them, right? So this is why we felt compelled to take all of what we're doing and add more testing that allows you to have a better journey, to know what to do. We started with genetics. Right Here's the priority. This biological system doesn't work. This biological system works a little too well. And both of those things could equal problem or solution. Need to focus on it or not. And you've all been through this. You've learned this. Now, what do I do? We know that genes, 
plus epigenetics, environment, nutrition, lifestyle. These two things have to come together to either have a problem or a solution. You weren't born with a problem out of these bad genes. It's not until you added the habits that it equaled a problem. But we then have to unravel which habit. What did I do? Just like me, when I went to the doctor with five chronic diseases, the question I asked was, what did I do wrong? Did I eat something wrong? Did I breathe something wrong? What happened? Because it doesn't make sense to me that I've never been sick. And all of a sudden at 38, I have five problems all at the same time. I didn't get the answer to my question. You know, I without saying these words, I was basically informed that we don't do that here. You know, it's like, here's the diagnosis, here's the prescription. And five siloed answers that have nothing to do with each other, which we all know, know we all know is not the way the body works. So this is why it's very important. If I had had my epigenetics at that time, I could have taken those three years down to maybe one because all of the trial and error and exper experimentation would have been out, out the door. It's like straight to, it's your immune system, right? That's the thing that's struggling. What's the difference? Genetics is here's what you were born with. Here's biological function, right? Here's the tools that you were given. Now, epigenetics is where are you at today? What's happening in your body today? You might have the good version of the gene, but based on what you've been doing to yourself for the past 20 years, it's under expressing as if you have the bad version. And there's certain parts of my journey where if I had that information, I would have gone past trial and error to precision and solve the problem immediately, All right? So that's just going back to why that part's important. Uh, so now number three, sleep. Right, we have to work on sleep. It's going to be part of the challenge. A lot of you talk to us about sleep. Uh, we often find that when we're working with people, the first thing that gets fixed, often unintentionally, it's not even a, you know, a, a program-based thing. It's kind of the um, outcome of reducing inflammation, balancing hormones, balancing neurochemicals, having good metabolic health. The things that we're working on equal good sleep. So we're going to implement in this challenge things around sleep and how to get you doing better there. And we all know that there's different ways that our sleep gets disrupted based on our genetics. And we also know that this might be the one thing that's causing me to age rapidly. I, I don't get it. I'm doing everything right, but I still have these wrinkles. I don't get it. I'm doing everything right, but my white hair went from here to here, right? So what's going on? Why is this progression happening? So that's where the combination of the genetics and the epigenetics allows us to truly understand where to focus. Number four, of course, hormones. Right, that's another big area, particularly for women. We talk about this a lot when it comes to the hormonal cascade and all of what you can inform to either lead yourself towards aging and good uh, and bad health or away from it. And again, very important in women, but even in men, you have dihydrotestosterone and other toxic hormone metabolites that can lead to inflammatory state. I, I have a story about a mother who came to us with breast cancer for the fourth time. And when it happened for the fourth time, she was sent to us by a functional medicine clinic saying she's trying to figure out why. And so we looked at her genetic pathways and we found that uh, she was really fast for the uh, CYP3A4 gene, which metabolizes your estrogens into 16 hydroxy estrogen a potent, potent toxin. We don't see this often. We see a lot of 4-OH and I'm sure a lot of people listening here will raise their hand and say, yep, I'm 4-OH fast and I work on that now. Uh, 16 is rare and it's very, very potent. Her detox pathways that get rid of the 16-OH are also suboptimal. So it's no surprise that she ended up with this problem based on her epigenetics, the things that she was doing that were misaligned. Now, the interesting thing is we asked her, do you have a daughter? Do you have a sister? Like we, we should also work on the other women in your family because this is a big red flag. Uh, anyone else that needs to be tested? She said, I have a son. And she said, is this why he has testicular cancer? And for us, that was a big aha moment because, you know, we focus on women and we should when it comes to hormone health because that area is so broken. But the exact same pathways are affecting men and so much more now than ever before. There was a report that just came out uh, this, oh, sorry, last week saying that the number of 15 to 44 year olds that are getting cancer has increased by 80%, almost double. Right? And, and a lot of that is in men. So the hormone cascade applies to both. We're going to look at both um, and we're going to see 
how we can use this to slow aging down, right? The other area, of course, is diet and nutrition, a big bucket for us to dive into. There's so many things that are, you know, uh, blanket statements that everybody should be doing. And then there's certain things that are personalized. And then there's certain things that we don't know yet because your epigenetics hasn't spoken to us yet. So there's genetics. We know, you know, fat metabolizer, carb metabolizer, you know, do I make the enzymes to break down my vegan foods? Then all of what I'm doing, you know, there's other considerations like volume of food. How do I know how much to eat? There's no gene that will tell you that. But your epigenetics may tell you that there's oxidative stress happening because your diet is not aligned to your metabolic health. One of the core, um, so oxidative stress, we've all heard this when we've been looking in genetics, you know, your antioxidant pathways remove oxidants from the cell to make sure they're thriving and they're staying young. Uh, and too much oxidation leads to rapid aging. So what leads to oxidation? Oxidative stress. And the big one that we talk about is cardiovascular exercise, right? Some people have been told here that are listening today, you should not be running on a treadmill. Many people that are listening here today have been told that. Some people have been told, hey, you have this blessing of an amazing antioxidant pathway. Go ahead and hit your treadmill. You'll do just fine. But that's not the only source of oxidative stress. Not eating the right amount of calories. So this not only, not only means overeating, it also means undereating. How do you know what that number is? Right? How do you know? And I went through this because I was fasting intermittently, and I still do. And when you start fasting, um, and fasting, by the way, is going to be part of the challenge. So get ready. If you haven't done it yet, you're going to be. Uh, when you start fasting, this you just get deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole of less is more. Right? And you keep pushing yourself towards just eat less, just eat less, just eat less. three meals a day, two meals a day, one meal a day. And that's where I got to. And I didn't realize that this thing in my body, particularly, it works for some people, was actually my Achilles heel. I couldn't do that. I needed to eat at least two meals a day. And so you have people like David Sinclair out there who eats one meal a day and he's in his 50s, looks like he's 30 something, right? Uh, for him, it works. And he also, by the way, measures his epigenetic expression regularly to see what's going on with his biological age. So this is a tool that he uses to prove that the things he's used doing work or don't work as a researcher at Harvard. Right? So he's a Harvard geneticist and this is what he does. Um, and it's funny because Tracy and I were in, uh, we met in person last week and actually spoke to someone whose father worked side by side with David Sinclair at Harvard. And we're gonna be talking to this gentleman soon uh, to get his insights because, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you some of those insights when we talk to him. Uh, but this is what we saw is that, you know, when it comes to things like fasting, when it comes to metabolic health, uh, how do you know what the right volume is? Genetics will tell you metabolic pathways, but it doesn't measure in time. It doesn't measure where you're at, right? And that, that's a very important thing to do. And blood work is challenging because blood work is all disease centric. Right. When you go get a blood test, it's trying to figure out if you should need if you need a cholesterol pill or not. Not, you know, is your inflammatory load causing an uh, cholesterol response? Right. So the the outcome the the tests are designed to look for disease and tell you what pill to take. They're not designed to look for uh, dysfunction that can reverse or uh, eliminate disease. And so this is where we felt compelled to be one of the first to bring that to market, and we did. So as we move along in this challenge, um, you know, we're going to go through this dealing with the acute, optimizing ourselves. How do we get into sort of longevity guru biohacking territory if you want to come that far? And we're going to compress this into a three-month timeline. Anyone here that participates uh, through testing, meaning if you want to get your epigenetic testing done pre and post, uh, we want to honor the fact that you're participating in the challenge. So we'll make sure that there's a discount there. You're not going to pay retail for this challenge only. Otherwise, it's retail. Um, it's a brand new product. So we, we're trying not to sort of get it out there at a discounted price. Um, meanwhile, for the, for the purpose of this challenge, anyone here will give you access to a pre and post test. So on day one, we're going to benchmark what's your biological age. And what are the key factors that are leading to that, whether good or bad? Is it your immune system? Is it your methylation? Is it your metabolic health? 
Like what are the things that are driving that number that we see, whether it's a good or a bad number, right? And you'll be surprised. Um, and sorry, and to finish what I was saying, and then we'll do a second test post, right? You can also buy that at the discounted price to then benchmark again where you got to so we can measure the success of what we're going to do now in this longevity challenge. Anyone is welcome to participate in the challenge. If you're not tested, you're still going to go through the process. You just won't measure and you won't know what you achieve. Those of you that measure know, we are then going to tell everybody who won, right? We are, there's going to be a podium with the gold, silver, bronze medal, and you're going to win. And we want to feature your story. That was the whole intention here is we want to create some wins. We want to create some amazing stories. We want somebody to come out here and say, in three months, I reversed my biological age 10 years. And if I didn't know this stuff, I wouldn't have been able to get there. You know, so this is why we want to also benchmark and test. So, uh, so that's the whole intention is we're going to work together. Challenge is ready. We're going to secretly drop as we come out every couple of weeks and tell you what we're doing next. You're going to work on it. Some of you can just follow along, do the challenges. Those of you that really want to prove this to yourself and you want to understand, first of all, even on day one, what's failing, right? Why am I stuck? What's the thing that I need to do? Your epigenetics are going to tell you. Then fast forward on fi the final day, sometime in January, we're going to test again and we're going to see who the winner is. And I want to invite the winners to join us on our Instagram, both my personal and the corporate, because we'd love to share your stories. You love to, if you decide, if you want to opt out, no, you can, you can still win and, and not be part of the challenge. Uh, sorry, not be part of the, um, uh, the outreach and let people know what you did, but we would love if you would share your stories. Uh, we want the world to know what's possible. We, we want people to know how quickly it's possible. We want people to know that if you do this stuff that we're talking about, that we can very quickly change people's, you know, um, let's call it health span, you know, how long you're going to live with good health. Right. Very important place to be. And and that number is so highly variable based on your habits and knowing what to do. Take me, for example, I went from 43 to 33 and I'm only getting younger on the inside. Right. And in fact, I can tell you that people that I meet, uh, that I meet after some time, the first thing they tell me is what happened? You look younger. You know, about two weeks ago, I met with a friend in Toronto who I hadn't seen in a good four years. And I'm embarrassed to say that, but time flies by, right? We should have connected earlier, but it's been four years. Very first thing, what happened to you? You're younger than when I saw you before, right? So I went through this process of internally cleaning things up. And now things are so spotless inside that the outside is starting to change, right? My skin looks different. Uh, my hair looks like literally it's stronger. You can see it right? My fingernails are different. So the people that see me after some time are saying this to me now. Uh, and now the opposite is also true and why this is so important. There's a client in Miami who we met at a biohacking conference, uh, actually in Austin, Texas. And she is an Instagram influencer who has six figure followers that talks about health, wellness, and longevity. She is in her late 30s, right? Uh, and she is seemingly healthy, like physically fit, right? Looks great, uh, does everything, quote unquote, right, right? When her biological age was tested, it came out to 72. 72. And she was shocked. She actually, the reason why I'm telling you the story and why I know is because she called me yelling, saying that this doesn't work, this doesn't make any sense, your product sucks. I said, well, let's look at the data. And the data didn't lie. It was what it was saying was accurate. The methylation markers versus the algorithm that calculates the, the age were correct, right? So it all added up. Uh, and by the way, I do see a bunch of questions. We're going to get to them in about 10 minutes. So just so you know, your questions aren't being ignored. We are going to get to all of them. We'll make sure they're answered. So, you know, so all of a sudden you have somebody who's doing everything right, that thinks they're doing great. She had been through our genetic testing and learned a little bit about supplementation, et cetera, but she already had her own protocol. She works with a functional nutritionist in Miami and they do some work together and they publish it all over Instagram, right? So we showed her that there were certain pathways that epigenetically at the methylation level were completely off. 
the choices she were making, she was making were not right for her. You know, something as simple as should I be a vegan or not? Sounds good. And for the right person, best thing you can do for the wrong person, you're going to be 38, but 72 on the inside. Right? Because it's the wrong choice. There were certain things she was doing that was disrupting her hormone cascade. You know, she was taking hormones uh, to try and stay youthful and younger, but didn't intervene properly. Right. And so all of a sudden those expression markers were off. And so the, the algorithm essentially said, well, if the average person dies at around 78, you're 72. That's what the algorithm told her. And this young woman was a six figure Instagram influencer that tells people how to be healthy all day long and is 38 years old. So this is the impact of understanding internal biological age. It's not a number. It is a guide. Right? Is it just like your genetics will give you many red flags? Here's where to focus. Here's the biological. Ignore all the noise. Let's start from scratch. Wherever your DNA is failing apart, uh, falling apart and failing, let's focus on that because that's going to give you the biggest ROI. If you start there, that's where you're going to get from here to here the fastest. Right? Epigenetics or biological age is going to tell you in time today where your genetics are methylating way over or way under capacity, which is another red flag. And if we drill into why that's happening, we now know exactly what to do. We now know, okay, of all the stuff that I was thinking of, of all the people's podcasts I listened to, of all the books I read, let me start with this one thing because 80% of what I'm feeling is going to be gone. And I potentially didn't even know what I was feeling because you can't feel genetic expression. Right? You can't feel inflammation until it's acute. You can't feel cancer cells thriving until it's too late, right? So there's all these things going on on the inside. And this is why we feel it's so important to understand biological age and measure epigenetic expression because it's going to direct you exactly to the priority in time today. Genetics is who are you? What's your wiring? Epigenetics is where are you at today? What do we need to focus on? And why is your biological age good? Great, if it is. And why is your biological age bad? And if it's bad, there's some work to be done. So this is what we wanted to share with you today is we're launching this challenge. My goal and our team's goal is that three people are going to win, right? I think everyone's going to win because there isn't going to, if you do this with us, if you're measure, if you're testing and measuring, great. If you're not testing and measuring, you're still welcome. Um, anyone that goes through this process is going to feel better at the end of the day. There'll be things that you're maybe familiar with that you're already doing. You can opt out those weeks. There'll be things that are brand new to you or that you thought about. And maybe as we do it together and support each other, it's easier for you to adopt and, and start, right? And that's another thing is we're going to do these things together and I'm going to do them with you, by the way. So this is where um, we're going to launch. and we're going to measure and whoever measures as having the greatest impact on themselves, which means you complied and you follow the rules, you did everything and you did it well. Uh, we want to feature your stories. If you would let us, you know, Instagram podcasts, wherever we can, we'd love to share because we want to inspire the world. We want people to know what's possible. We still regularly get calls from people that are stuck at their clinics. that just don't know that there's another option that there's so much more they could do, right? So much more. Um, I believe Beth put into the chat here um, what it is. So, okay, so there's a ability to get 15% off, which is awesome. So if you're in the challenge, you can use this code otherwise on the website and moving forward, um, we're going to, it's just the regular price. And I believe this is going to be open uh, until October 15th, right? So it will be open until then. We want to cut it off because we don't want this to be put out there as a long-term promotion code. This was strictly done just for the purpose of this challenge. We want you to be able to measure. And so we are also offering you ability to save some money. Um, it works on two kits because the purpose of this, again, is for the challenge. So pre and post. We're going to measure you pre, we're going to measure you post. Now, in terms of epigenetics, this is something that you may consider doing annual ongoing, right? It's, it's much more comforting to not be in the gray area and gray zone of, I really don't know what's going on. I'm taking these supplements. I did what the doctor said. I listened to this podcast, but I don't know. Like, is it working? Here's how you'll know. And this is why I do this regularly, if not twice a year, 
uh, sometimes once a year, depending how I'm feeling. Uh, and now I know, because even I slip up, I make mistakes. You know, I'll, let me tell you, two weeks ago, it was my birthday. And three different people invited me for lunch. And all three times, I was taken to somewhere where they served white fluffy bread. And me, trying to not be rude, ate some of the white fluffy bread. I got eczema. And I knew that I would, right? Because I know how my body works now. And I know exactly what's good for me and what's bad for me. So even I screw up, right? Even I screw up. And it's very easy for me to be doing other things that I don't even realize. What if, you know, there's a different level of pollution in your neighborhood because of what a neighbor's doing and, and their pesticides, you don't even know. So it's important to measure so that the red flag is alerted, the, the alarm is sounded, and then you can go investigate what needs to be focused on. And the epigenetics will tell you whether it's your immune system, metabolic or something else. So you know where to actually focus and prioritize. So with that, that's a challenge. You're going to work with us until January, bi-weekly. We're going to keep working on different items. And some of you are going to measure and you're going to truly learn where you're at today and how much better you got. You can continue measuring year after year so that you have some way to check where you're at right? You're sort of, I'm my own doctor today. I'm my own health CEO, and I'm going to figure this out and maintain it. So you're welcome to continue testing. Um, and we want to invite whoever gets the best age drop to join us on our channels to share your story. So with that... Are, are employees or staff members allowed to participate in this, sir? For sure. Everybody <laughs> should. Yeah. I, I'm just asking for a friend. Just asking for a friend. For sure. Tracy, we want to see you on the podium. Are you kidding me? If, if you win, I'm flying down with a gold medal and putting it around your neck. All right, let's get it on. Let's see what happens. <laughs> We're going to do that. Okay, there's a lot of questions, so I'm going to jump to them um, to make sure we get them all done. What is it about telomere length that indicates it's... So why do I believe that telomere length indicates 120 years? It's the actual physical structure. So think about if you have a cheese grater and a piece of cheese and you start grating it, you kind of get an idea how long that piece of cheese is going to last. It's the same thing with telomere length. In ideal conditions, it's it, it looks like it's physically, the actual physical hardware is uh, meant to last for that long. And we know this kind of to be true because that's how long the longest living people have last, have lived, who have had the perfect, you know, non-inflammatory lives. Uh, Mary, I recently started taking this up and should I stop these for the first? I don't necessarily need to stop. Um, so you know, we're, we're trying to work on things where you don't need to buy anything because we don't want to every two weeks in the challenge. It's like, hey, go buy this, go buy that, go buy that. Like it, we're trying to work on things that you can just do. Right. So continue with your supplements. Um, what you can do, if you'd like, is, um, you know, you're going to be measuring your epigenetics. Right. What you can do uh, and not not during the challenge. Sorry, I'm saying this in the future is if you stop your supplements, see what happens to your epigenetic age. Right? You're going to benchmark today, you're going to know, right? And in the future, if you decide to stop and just test and see what is this actually doing for me? And it's going to open your eyes, right? Because if you're taking our supplements, they're they're managing genetic expression. Uh, so it's going to open your eyes to what happens to your biological age. Uh, okay, I have a blood analysis microscope, oxygen laser. Oh, so uh, a live blood analysis is kind of like, um, it's an excellent test, by the way, It's but that's what's going on in the blood. Uh, these are not, what we're going to use and they're they're not answering the question of biological age they're kind of answering the question of um you know oxidation and uh sort of what's in the blood what is the blood structured as is are the cells too close together are they so it tells you more about the blood reading which then informs you on diet nutrition stress these types of things so it's not informing you on biological age different test mary uh how much of the test how many of them do i need uh, I need to know. So the tests, I believe, are three ninety nine, but our team arranged a fifteen percent discount. Uh, you need a pre and post, right? So it's kind of like here's day one where I am, and after the challenge is done, I'm going to measure again, and I'm going to see how many years I was able to improve my biological age. So that's the intention. Um, and now Zach is asking. I've done inner age tests to a company. I get my blood tests on. Uh, I've done it four times. It's been up and down at 59, uh, 69, 52. Okay. So depending which one you did, um, 
there's one, um, there's a couple out there that me measure epigenetics. Um, and that's what we're doing. So, but the goal of the challenge is to measure now on day one, and then to prove to you that the challenge got you better, right? That's the intention. So measuring now and then getting better. So if you, if it sounds like, first of all, what you're doing is great. You keep measuring, which is the right way to do things to know whenever something stands out as a red flag to act. Uh, but yeah, the, the idea would be to measure now and then post. How much of the task? We just answered that. Uh, Luke is asking how secure are your servers? The DNA does not find itself in bad hands. So we're not in the data selling business. This is a very important question, right? Uh, in terms of genetic testing, the reason why you hear so much of that is because your DNA doesn't change. Why does that matter? Because me selling you a DNA test, we're done, right? It's a one-time transaction. So all of these genetic testing companies became data selling companies because there was no repeat business to be had with the patient or customer. And so they had to reinvent themselves. So we took it upon ourselves to say, well, those guys kind of sell data and tell you about genetic conditions, but there's so much more to learn from genetics in terms of chronic disease, aging performance. If we become the insight company, right? Let's, let's actually give you actionable advice. We don't need to sell data because we're going to work with you clinically. We, we have a lot of, in, in fact, some people that are probably listening today that are in our clinical programs. So that's the path we chose. And so we're not in that data selling business. It's never going to happen. It's in our terms, in fact. Um, did the uh, Viome, no, Viome never replied. Um, I have chatted with people uh, in and around the area and they sort of avoided it. Um, but guess what? Thanks to the amazing work of our team, Tracy, B, everyone who's on here today, we just launched a better gut microbiome test. So was never my intention, but when so many people came to us saying that I'm disappointed, if you read the comments when I posted that challenge to Naveen saying, let's debate this like openly, the comments that were in terms of critiquing biome in a certain way, we realized we can fix this. If we apply our functional interpretation to microbiome testing, we can help people. So that's coming soon. Uh, Jazz is asking, are the DNA aging available outside of America? Uh, I would leave that question to B, if you don't mind answering that. I actually don't know logistics. Uh, I think Canada and US should be no problem. Jazz, yeah, if you don't ship mind. to our um, regularly serviced countries. So we do have a shipping guide on our website um, that kind of gives you an overview of where we can and can't ship. Um, okay. And if unfortunately you do land in a country that we don't ship to, it is typically because of customs and we want to make sure that your sample doesn't get stuck at the border and we run into any sort of issues that yeah. way. Okay, so it'll tell you on the website when you go to order, it will say yes or no for shipping. Um, so uh, Leslie is asking, is DNA aging test different from the DNA test that I took? Yes, DNA testing is what version of what gene do I have? How do I make hormones? How do I make, make neurochemicals? Epigenetics is how are my genes expressing today so that I understand how old I am on the inside? Meaning, here's my genes, here's my choices. That combination leads to the expression of my epigenetics. Now, when you put these tools together, it becomes so powerful because you go from, here's my epigenetics are screaming out red flag, poor metabolic health, but I'm doing everything right. Why do I have poor metabolic health? You go back to your genes, you're like, oh, my FUT2 methylation gene is off. So I can't eat those chickpeas every day every, anymore. That may be the thing. Oh, I see my GSTM1 gene is missing. I have to be careful about what I'm putting into my gut in terms of inflammatory foods, right? So when you pair these two, it's like red flag today. What's happening in my body? It's like going to the doctor and getting blood work. We found something. Then you use your genetics to figure out where to, where to actually intervene, right? So the combination is very powerful. I turned 73 in two days. Oh, wow. I hope I didn't get tested all like that. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to get you. Let's, let's see if we can get Lisa to 63. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, Leslie said, already had your DNA test on. Seems like paying for two tests is like paying. No, so we just answered that. It's a very different product. This is something that, by the way, people do every year, if not sometimes two or three times a year. It's not necessary for you to do so. But a lot of functional medicine clinics use epigenetic testing 
I annually or biannually as a way to measure progress and also as a way to measure when things go wrong that maybe we're outside of awareness because there's no symptom. It's a way of tracking. Epigenetics are way off. Expression is off. Biological age just increased dramatically. Something happened. We need to intervene. That's why people do it regularly. Uh, so we answered your question, Diana. It's not the same. Um, and let's see. So Chiel is asking, I'm a bit confused. I ordered the DNA uh Yes, it's different. So we answered that question also. It's a different test. Uh, do you have a sample of the DNA gene report to be shown on this webinar? Uh, we have three. It's actually based in an app. So the way it's been built, because so the, remember, the DNA 360 is a one-time thing. So we give you your portal and you're in it. The epigenetic test, people usually continue to do it for, for as long as they'd like to keep measuring and keep looking for that problem, right? To make sure that they stay ahead of suppose immunity dropped and cancer cells are thriving. If I keep checking my epigenetics, I can maybe catch a change in swing epigenetics before it's symptomatic. So that's why people, so for that purpose, it's actually in an app. It's in an app so that we can continue uh, the data progressing over time. It's not a report, it's an app. Uh, and the app is gonna keep evolving to, I think in January, there's a version of it launching that's gonna tell you like, eat this, do this. Like, it's actually gonna coach you through things, right? Uh, but uh, B, if we have um, screenshots, we can share them maybe later after we're done the questions. Uh, Gail, how does it intersect with the work we're currently doing with the functional practitioner? So how it intersects two ways. It's one is to measure to know, right? Measure pre and post, like, did, is this working for me? It's also to prioritize, meaning that uh, your epigenetics are gonna scream from the rooftop, here's the systems that are doing well, here's the systems that are not doing well. And then all of a sudden you can know and your your guide, your functional practitioner can know. How, and that's why you haven't heard us talking about this that much. It's mostly the actual practitioners that use these tools for their patients. So they're saying to the patient, hey, I'm gonna put you on a migraine reduction regimen and we're gonna pre and post test you to prove that something changed on the inside, right? And that's how these functional practitioners use them. And you can use it for the same purpose. And it's twofold. Proving that you're on your way to reduce your biological age. Second is to stay ahead of major calamity that much earlier than symptoms are gonna tell you, right? If the epigenetic expression is off, something's going on. We need to dive deeper, right? Uh, Leslie, I just received my biological days from um, Mark Hyman's, I actually haven't seen his. Uh, we can use that for day one, and then you can um, continue with the day. Uh, but I would wonder how would we do that because the code is for two tests. So maybe what you do, Leslie, if you don't mind, email client care, and we'll figure out if there's something we can do for you there. Uh, we'll just make sure that that actually is the same testing. Uh, that being said, we'll work with you on that. We'll figure out what to do there since you you just take a just took a test. Barbara, she takes hormones. Um, this, if this is off, uh, um, yeah. So Barbara, you're on your pellets. Um, you're, so one of the challenges is, is going to be around hormones. It's not necessarily hormone replacement or therapy. It's more about hormone disruption. So we may find if you're doing Dutch testing to measure that you may see some improvement there. Um, and Barbara, have you done our genetic testing? Because if you have, your doctor should be using that to tweak the prescription. Uh, it's it's very easy to create great outcomes, but it's also very easy to cause problems when it comes to hormones. So just a question for you, Barbara, have you done our testing? Yes, no. Uh, if so, your clinician should probably use that, right? Um, but yeah, you'll see an impact on the expression of that pathway also. So maybe your doctor will see a swing in you know what's going on on the inside. Uh, Luke, can I order the kit and get it delivered to Mexico? Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see the answer is there. They just, you go just try and order and see what happens. If someone does I a just, um, Sorry, Cash, just to interrupt. Sorry, Luke. Um, unfortunately, due to customs, I just checked with our sales department. We cannot ship to Mexico, but thank you. Yeah, so Mexico has always been a challenge with testing. Um, but regardless, um, you can still follow along the challenge, but we can't ship you a test. If someone does a pretest, are you going to give the epigenetic analysis and what to do? Uh, so the 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 way it's built uh, is the app is so easy to use. It, you don't need a clinical intervention with it, right? Now that being said, 
Denise, you've given me an idea and we want to make this the best we possibly can for you, right? So let's do this. Anyone that is participating in the challenge uh, with testing, if you're getting the testing done, let's add a group call for the purpose of reviewing it, right? So to make this challenge more powerful and more impactful, Denise, uh, makes a lot of sense what you're saying it's not necessary like with the way the app has been designed we want to make it super easy for you to understand and use but uh denise like, good point let's do that well we're going to add into this three month challenge a call at the beginning to go over the epigenetic results to help you understand what it all what it all means right and we'll do that as a group we've done this kind of thing before it's going to be great uh what does it say about your fertility so a lot what it's not going to say, like a doctor, you're fertile, you're not fertile. What it's going to say is what's going on with your toxin loads, what's going on with your, uh, you know, uh, hormone system, what's going on with your uh, immune system. I can't tell you how many fertility clinics that we worked with where removing cosmetics was the thing that allowed the woman to get pregnant. Women put up to... A, uh, upwards of 500 chemicals a day on their bodies between soap, shampoo, perfumes, everything, right? The average, by the way, is four pounds, four and a half pounds per year. The average woman take, puts four and a half pounds of toxic chemicals on her skin per year. So the short answer is there's a lot when it comes to fertility. Fazia, one thing I would say, if you're very specifically working on fertility, you might consider the Genomic Mastery Program uh, I would suggest maybe dropping your email in here or somebody can drop a note for you um, to understand how to uh, work on programs. Because this is an area where it's not take this pill, it's work. It's weeks and weeks of work, but we've done it so many times uh, and we can get you better. And it's not going to be the straightforward answer you think it is. Okay, Patricia's in. So Patricia's ordered. She's ready to go. Uh, I did two of the DNA. Correct. You got two of the DNA genes, correct? Oh, thanks. I got a happy birthday. Uh, I now actually am the 43 that, uh, you know, we, uh, oh, so, 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 uh, so Fazia, take a look in the chat. B just dropped in an email address. Please connect with Jason and we work, we can work on build a program for you. Uh, that's functional in nature that can work on the fertility and the things we're going to do are not what your doctor would do. We're not working on the system itself. We're working on all the things that are disrupting your hormones, preventing you from being your natural healthy self. Nicole Perez. Is this the Nicole Perez, by the way? And you know who I'm talking about. Is this you? If it's you, uh, just drop a hello. Uh, will there be individual feedback and support included based on epi or more of a general? Yeah. So we answered this, um, which is not needed. The app is meant to be easy to use, but we just added a group call so that we can go over the results. So everybody gets a deeper dive. Not necessary, but let's make this the best we can make it. Uh, Diane, I just clicked in the link in the chat. I put in the code. It doesn't work. Somebody else just ordered, so it should be working. Uh, Diane, was it able to work for you? And B, maybe we'll just test that just to make sure there wasn't a problem there. But somebody else said that they were able to get through. So uh, Elizabeth is saying, how long will it take for the results to come back? Uh, that's a B question. B, how long does that take? And remember, the results don't impact the challenge, right? It's just a benchmark. So irrespective of if you're 80 or 20, we're still doing the challenge, right? So B, how long does it take? Do you know? I'm just confirming with the sales team. Just one second, okay. sorry. Yes, uh, Shun, the 360 is very different in DNA, DNA aging. We, we answered this already. Um, so it's like, you know, DNA is your genetics. DNA aging is your expression. Where are you at today? What's your biological age? Something that we can measure ongoing. Uh, Lori, yeah, November 1st to January 1st-ish. And we actually might start a little before November 1st. So we're going to keep this open till October 15th, and then we'll start right after that. So uh, within October. Laura's in. Great to see you, Laura. Uh, Dirk's here. You have uh, my 360 report. Can you tell me whether I continue my long-standing vegan diet in this challenge? I'm highly motivated. Uh, I'd like to change our current healthcare system. Hallelujah, Dirk. Uh, it's a sick care system, I agree. This program could be a great disruption. That's exactly the point. And this is one of the things that we want to prove. And the program itself is the most valuable part of this, right? Like if you go talk to doctors that are running programs like this, they'll charge 
five to fifteen thousand dollars per person. You, you'll see a lot of this. A lot of the functional medicine doctors that build multi-month programs, seven thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars. We're doing this for free with all of you guys. We just want to get you better because you trusted us on the testing. We want to give you more value. And we really think it's cool that we can actually measure and prove, hey, a thousand people did this test. On average, they gained three years of life. Imagine the impact. Imagine the impact of being able to tell the world that. It's going to be awesome. And you guys will be the pioneers of that. Uh, and sorry, I didn't even answer your question. Yes. Uh, so look at the FUT2 gene, Dirk. FUT2. If it's a GG, you're not going to do well as a vegan. If it's an AG, you might have a bit of gut dysbiosis. If it's an AA, you're going to do fine. The solution, either cut out the vegan diet or add digestive enzymes uh, at a probably double the dose of what it says on the bottle. Just purchase 360 as part of Peter Krohn. Uh, can I purchase uh, first test? Can, can, I, can this test I purchase be... So that's different. So the Peter Krohn workshop um, that we did is, or we're doing is a deep dive into the genetics. Manny, I would recommend you stick with what you did there. Uh, this is foundational. You're going to learn everything about yourself, everything you could possibly learn. Uh, this is a very different thing. This is a challenge around actually doing the work. What you're enrolled in is who am I? What do I need to prioritize? What's going on on the inside? What we're now about to embark on is let's do the work. Let's implement things that are going to change your clock, your biological clock. Two very different things. Uh, and I'm seeing the aging part, 38 factors. Uh, it's the same test every time. So it's the same price because it's the same processing, right? So the test is the same. The data is the same. Um, so what you're testing on day one is where are you at today, right? And where you're testing three, four months later is where did you get to? And in the specific areas of epigenetic expression, did your metabolic health get better? Did your immune system get better? Like what are, where are the specific areas where things got better? And by the way, where did they not get better? You know, so maybe that problem is more acute than we thought. So you have to think for everybody here, you have to think about epigenetic testing very different than you think about DNA testing. DNA testing is tell me who I am. I'm going to do this once in my life. And it's going to be my instruction manual that guides every future decision. Epigenetic testing is... I want to stay ahead of a major problem and I want to track my health and I don't believe in blood work because it's disease centric. So I want to use this tool, this tool I'm going to test every year and it's going to tell me where I'm at and not only where I'm at, but specifically what part is not working so I can focus and prioritize because things change, environment changes, food changes, the same box of whatever that you used to buy and eat, the manufacturer may have changed the ingredients and you didn't even know what used to make you feel good now makes you feel bad, right? Um, Lee says, yeah, test the public water supply. Yeah. So hundred percent test your water. 30% of American tap water has PAFAs forever, PFAS for every chemicals. Now that's absurd, right? That's like, that's a shocking truth. Uh, it's all the chemicals that are being used in firefighting and shampooing and car washes, like all this stuff goes into the drain and these forever chemicals don't break down. So yes, get your water tested. And if you have a problem, filter it. How can I find out the meaning for the DNA 360 genes that are all covering in the previous webinars, um, UCP1AA? So there's two options there. Um, you can work with a coach that can dive deep for you, right? And some of those genes we use in clinical programs, so they're not, uh, you know, there's no, so there's certain things that we're allowed to say to a consumer there's certain things we're not allowed to say to a consumer when we're handing over a document and the line between, is this a diagnostic tool or not? Right. So in order to be able to allow you to be able to order a test yourself, there's certain things we're not saying. We still test them because people working with us clinically still need those insights, but that means you have to be intaken as a patient in order for us to talk to you about that stuff. Just like there's certain work, blood work you can order and there's certain blood work your daughter, doctor has to order. You can't buy medicine until your doctor prescribed it. So same thing here. Right. Uh, Lisa, I was going to try a new supplement. Should I wait? Yes. Wait. Wait until after we start the challenge. I'm 68. I fast a lot in my 20s. This is Mary. When I fast now, I get sick. I'm nervous about the fasting expert. Can you address this? Yeah. So we're going to figure out why. Um, and, and, and Mary, we can chat about this more personally and you can send an email. We'll, we'll work on this. But when you say sick, what does that mean? Like, do you get 
low energy, vomiting, headaches, like what does that actually mean? And that's going to point to what's going on. Uh, in fact, the epigenetic testing will probably tell us what's going on. Is it your gut? Is it your immunity? Is it some other imbalance? Like what's actually the causing the problem? And we'll address that, right? We'll address that very specific thing because I feel sick is the outcome, but there's something underlying driving that. And we're going to figure out what that is, right? And we'll get you back to your fasting. Uh, is this the same as a regular? No. So we've answered that. And I understand that some of these questions came up before we answered it. So they'll be re repeating. Uh, what other types of challenges? Well, we don't want to spoil all the fun. Uh, there's certain exercises we're going to get you to do. There's certain therapies we're going to get you to do that you can actually do at home. Right. Uh, there are some supplements we're going to recommend that you don't have to do if you don't want to buy them. And they're not from us, by the way, there's things that you would go out and get on your own. Uh, there's nothing that we particularly are going to, are going to sell. Um, there's certain things we're going to get you to learn, right? Uh, there's certain things that you're going to do that are beyond you and, and incorporate your family and your loved ones. So it's a multi-tier thing of me cherry picking at what I went through for three years and what had impact and what we can do as a group that's easy, that's impactful. That doesn't mean you have to go buy a $5,000 piece of equipment uh that most people would have access to and again i don't want to spoil the fun but there are going to be things you can do that are safe uh we're going to close it the only thing i'll tell you the spoiler is we're going to close it with a crazy fast and when i say crazy fast i mean crazy fast it's not just a fast it's a crazy fast and i'm going to do it with you and if you do follow through you are going to feel incredible karma um She's uh, is a question for Beth. I'll get the test. We'll use the discount. Why should repeat customers be treated less than well new customers? Okay, so Karma's asking, I will get the test, but I should be able to use the discount. For uh, anybody who has already purchased the DNA Jing test, there will be, I'll drop a code in the chat that will give you the 15% off discount on just a single kit. So you'll be able to use that to buy your secondary kit. Okay. And it's funny that somebody named Karma would ask that question. That's a sign. Beautiful name. Uh, Madonna, I did that 360. Haven't seen the results, what my APOE was uh, with my new test. So separate, you're going to find out about your APOE. Again, prioritize. Here's a biological system that doesn't work. Then it's going to be epigenetics. Where is in today, where are we seeing the outcome of that? So your APOE 3, say it's off. Are we seeing a change in your methylation, which means that potentially there's some plaque buildup. Are we seeing biological age skyrocket, which means maybe it's already progressed into something that needs clinical action, right? So that's why we're pairing these things. And that's why we believe that the longevity challenge is going to bring that number down. And you'll be surprised how the simplest of things will bring it down. The simplest of things. And how we can take things that are complex and give you a simple solution, meaning... There's things that you probably already know about that you can buy and do that you've wanted to try. And we know something else that's very simple that you could do at home that will give you the exact same outcome. And those are gonna be part of the challenge. Okay, so Lori, what is epigenetics that you're testing? I don't take the test, uh, uh, if the challenge is different. I, so the difference is if you don't get tested, you're still gonna come along this journey on the challenge. Uh, you'll probably feel different, you're gonna know. Uh, but what we won't know is how much better things got and which specific systems started thriving that potentially were failing before. So the purpose of epigenetics, again, is two things. Biological age. Let's add up everything that I've done to date, and that's my report card. How good of a job did I do? Biological age. So it's a benchmark, right? The second thing it does is priority this is the system that's failing and it's way overexpressing or way underexpressing. So here's what I need to intervene with as opposed to the trial and error, right? One thing is, you know, biological age, but then what do you do next? There's so many things. Okay, let's look at the core systems and figure out which one is I need, that I need to prioritize. So that's what's going to kind of give you. Then combine that with the genetics and it's so much more personalized, right? So much more like focus on this particular gene pathway and then the epigenetics will get better. Biological age drops. Ahara is asking, how do those of a New York state participate? Um, I don't think we've had a challenge shipping to New York. Uh, B, you can answer that. But as far as I know, our lab is able to ship to New York. Yep. As far as I know, that is okay. Yeah. 
the test, Janice, yes, is different. You did a genetic test. This is epigenetics. And we've answered this question now. I'm sure your question came before I answered that. Uh, Danny, is the epigenetic test separate from the regular? So we've answered that. Um, and it's not a silly question. No questions are silly. Uh, so a long-time functional medicine practitioner. So in your case, this is a great tool to pre and post benchmark and show the improvement because someone like Danny, functional medicine practitioner doing incredible work for people. What happens? Someone starts to feel better and they forget how bad they felt. And they don't realize how much improvement actually happened. And Danny's probably familiar with this, right? People start to feel good and they forget how bad they actually felt. This is a way to prove it, that like you got five years younger, right? And that's why it's a very powerful tool in functional medicine practice. Uh, Luke, I look forward to being with you as a winner. Yes, me too. It'd be awesome. Uh, Ethel, uh, I did the DNA gene testing on Monday. I'm waiting for my results. Amazing. Uh, so for the challenge, you need two. We dropped a promo code in here. You don't need, but again, if you want to be part of the competition, we're going to test at the end also. Uh, so just so you know, I thought Natalie is saying what markers does it measure? Brain health, cardiovascular. So this, I think it looks at immunity, metabolic, uh, diet, nutrition are the key areas, and then methylation, which is an overarching system. So now it's not only biological age off, not only methylation is off, it's also, let's look at these other systems to see where genetic expression is off so we know where to focus and prioritize. Where's the problem coming from, right? And of course, genetics speak to everything else you're saying. Uh, it's Laila, I think. Once my epigenetic test, how do I connect this to my DNA report? So separate. Uh, connect, uh, in theory, is here's the priority, and now I can go back to my DNA to see which systems are failing. Is it my detox system? Is it my, you know, antioxidation? Like what's, where's the gaping hole? And I know I need to put extra work because I got bad news on the epigenetics, epigenetics or I got really good news on the epigenetics. So I don't need to put extra effort because we all need a little less work, right? We're all busy with so many things. So if you're doing well, okay, let's just keep doing what I'm doing because my I'm three, four, five years younger. So I, I've done it. I don't need to push, right? Uh, Stevie Snow is asking, I'm functional medicine practitioner. I've been using genetic reports. Uh, yes, amazing. So genetic reports, blood work, and organic. These are amazing. So when you have somebody like Stevie that knows what they're doing, you can use the right blood work. You can use organic acid tests. You can use Dutch testing to look at hormones. You know, that, that typical clinical experience of your allopathic doctor isn't so much that. It's more like, take this, and if you have a problem, call me, right? But Stevie's doing something incredible. This is how medicine should be practiced, what Stevie's doing. Uh, Mary's asking, I'll do the challenge, but I'll not be able to get my husband to do it. Do I, do you offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? I will know he'll not participate in the group. Yes, we do. So Mary, um, if you see in the chat, there's an email for Jason Julian, connect with Jason and he can tell you about the one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunities, all right? So connect with him. Uh, it's in the chat and he can tell you all about that. Can we use this with a gene RX? I'm not familiar with gene RX. Uh, while I answer the uh, next question, I will look that up. Um, and the next question was from Stevie, which is, I'm very curious about how this will enhance my practice. So yeah, it will enhance it in the way where it's much, it's sort of uh, much more per precise in terms of chronological age. So your methylation is directly speaking to what's going on today, right? So if you know what's going on today, blood work, there's still ranges you're looking at, right? Uh, organic acid testing, I think, is awesome. Epigenetics is precision, pinpoint precise. It's not, uh, there's no range. It's here's where you're at, right? Um, so, and it's giving you the cause, whether it's immunity, diet, nutrition, or metabolic. So you, you then direct your protocols with more precision, and you're measuring with more precision also. Uh, I just looked up GeneRx. I'm not familiar. Uh, I don't think it's something we integrate with. It's, I'm not familiar with them. Okay. And Janet asked, I have uh, Giardia, sorry, a lot of inflammation and I'm on a three month biological treatment to conserving my finances. Uh, so you are working on something at the sort of clinical pharma level, let's say, let's say right? So you have this like gut issue. Um, that's where... I would even say, 
you know, you're you're working on solving this acute problem. This is what we said that step one is fix your acute problem. If you remember the three steps we said, right? Acute optimization, biohack, right? So you're welcome to join us on this journey as us being part of this acute response, but just know that you're on a three month treatment. We are going to do things to sort of accelerate that, right? I'm not telling you to stop your treatment. Uh, I'm just saying that you may have a miraculous, like things got better faster, right? Because what you're talking about is, you know, a gut tract inflammatory problem. Um, so yeah, if you bring inflammation down, this thing might sort of mitigate itself. So all I would suggest is you talk to your clinician, let them know you're doing this thing and you're not taking any medication. You're not, you're just doing a bunch of uh, sort of practices that are going to bring inflammation down. And hey, maybe your doctor is going to say, you're the best patient I've ever had. Your thing went away in two months. We can stop this now. That would be an incredible thing to happen, right? Um, but I wouldn't stop what your doctor is telling you to, to do. Lisa, is this different or the same as Inside Tracker? Uh, Inside Tracker is awesome. Uh, the difference is, uh, again, blood work. We are looking at genetic expression and the gen the genes we look at are more functional in nature. So they, I would say they're more genetic. We're more functional genomics. So we're more about the same difference between medicine and functional medicine, right? Uh, Trudy, could this take place of signing up the master program or do this uh, start the program? So the master program, very, very different. Remember, master program, you're going to have a deep clinical intervention, right? This is general wellness practices. This is not the master program. So everyone, uh, Trudy's asking about a, pro a program we have called Genomic Mastery, which is a one-on-one -on -one coaching with a functional genomic practitioner who's going to dive deep into your genetic data, audit it, and figure out exactly what to prioritize and help you fix whatever problem or just optimize all your systems, right? It's a three, four month program, I think. And it's a, an, an intense deep dive. That's very different than what we're doing here. What we're doing here is a surface level Let's implement some longevity practices, bring biological age down by, you know, uh, just fixing and tweaking your existing habits, right? So very, very different. Um, could this take place of signing up for the master program? Do this first. Uh, I would just say, go ahead and do your master program and just take, consider this a supplement or an add-on. They are not the same. So do the mastery program. And this is just going to be additional insights, which you may already get from the mastery program anyway, right? Uh, is there a health questionnaire included so the information such as HRT can be relayed? Uh, uh, so we, on the DNA test, I think there is. On the epigenetics, I don't think there's a, B, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I don't think there's a questionnaire, but also keep in mind that what we're saying is irrespective of where you're at, who you are, what you're doing, we're going to add a layer of wellness to your regimen that's going to accelerate whatever you're doing, right? So if you're on HRT or not, if you're on medication or not, if you're sick or not, we can all do a little better. So all we want to prove to you is that with the habits that we know, everyone can get better and we can prove it with, with your epigenetics, right? Uh, Mary, I'm weighing how to spend my healthcare dollars. I am considered pre-NOVA MRI, supposed to flag conditions, uh, manifest at the conventional doctor's office. Do you know? Uh, yeah, so the difference is so that MRI, great tool, uh, it's looking for, uh, you know what an MRI is, it's scanning the body and looking for irregularities like actual lumps and, you know, broken pathways, physical infrastructure, right? Uh, well, we're saying epigenetics is sort of a precursor. It's an earlier uh, stage, right? So it's an earlier stage. Uh, you don't have to be in a disease state to, to find out that you're on the path to disease. Because if the genes are expressing off, you're already on that path. And now we need to intervene. An MRI has to find an actual disease. So the inflammation is either that bad or there's a lump, a cyst, a tumor that gets caught. Right? So they're looking for an actual disease state. So epigenetics will also show you a disease state, but it also starts much earlier. Like these are the very beginnings of poor health. Right? Um, so if you're trying to choose... It depends where you're at. Like if you feel like you're sick and there's a problem, go get the MRI, right? If you feel like something's off, I'm sick, but I don't know what it is, go get the MRI because you're probably already in a disease state and go catch that thing. If you feel like, no, I don't feel like I have, like I'm, I'm getting there. I just want to know and I want to prevent, then start earlier. Start with epigenetics. You're just earlier down the path. Uh, Janice, it seems to, I need both tests. The weather test was different. 
uh, it seems that I do need, yes, you need epigenetic kits for the uh, biological age pre and post, and the DNA test is something separate. Andrea is asking, is it possible to reduce residual chemo effects after post treatments two years in December? What test you recommend? So yeah, chemo, you know, you're attacking these fast uh, developing cells, right? So it's not only the cancer itself, it's all of these for women, you know, utero lining for everybody, it's hair, sometimes skin, nails. So all of these rapid developing cells get affected by chemo, even the good ones that you want. And so that's a massive load on your mitochondria, you know, your body trying to stay resilient and be healthy while it's being attacked like that. And it may be the thing that saved your life, you know, kill the cancer. Um, but there is definitely something to be said about the terrain being healed. You got rid of the disease. Now the terrain has actually been negatively affected by the exact treatment treatment you went through for the disease. So I would say in a big way, uh, terrain medicine, healing the terrain is exactly the whole purpose of biological age reversal, right? Your biological age is telling you how healthy the terrain is. That's what we're going to work on together. So Nicole, can you please repeat in what genes indicate whether or not a vegan FUT2? I'm going to type it in the chat. Uh, FUT2. It's in the methylation section and G is the problematic allele. So if there's an AG or a GG, uh, you're, you're, you're not doing a good job making the enzymes that help you break down most vegan proteins and some of the carnivorous stuff like kale, you know, broccoli, etc. cetera. Uh, question for Tracy, just in case you missed my question, how does this epigenetic test compare to TD? Similar, so TD does a good job. Uh, the difference is they, um, so just like the DNA 360, our mission was make it easy to use. So testing is testing, right? Anybody can go test. The report or the interpretation is really the product. That's really what you're getting. And our challenge and the challenge that I went through, and this was what I sought out to fix. Why did we build the DNA 360 the way we did? Is that's the product that I wished existed when I was sick versus this stack of data that PhDs had to interpret for me and all said something different. Right. So the same thing is the same thinking is what we've applied to the DNA aging epigenetic test is how do we make this easy? Right. There's so much data. If you look at the data on the back end, it'll make your head spin. It's tons and tons and tons and tons of data, uh, billions of data points, literally. How do we make this easy and break it down into three, four simple and direct reports that tell you exactly what to do? That's the difference between what we do and what True Diagnostics does. True Diagnostics, good job, good test, high quality product. If you don't have a functional medicine doctor sitting next to you, you might have difficulty knowing what to do. Ours is designed for you to know what to do. Uh, Corey is asking, I received my first set of functional health testing in May and then maybe do for a second. Um, do I need to take the, da, da, da. so the, it depends what you took. So you can type in the chat what you took, but uh, what we're specifically doing this challenge is to reverse biological age as proven through epigenetic expression. So if you've been tested for that and you have a recent benchmark, we can use that and then we retest later, right? Um, but uh, most functional testing isn't that. It's usually blood work. It's organic acid testing. Some of the stuff that Stevie was talking about, which is great. Um, and we'll keep going. So yeah, so it's not, it's, if it is the same thing, great. We can use it. If it's not the same thing, um, we'll you'll probably need to do this. Um, we have, uh, Mary, I already take a lot of high quality responsible source supplements as well as hormones. Do I need to stop these? No, you don't just stop anything. The, the other person that asked hadn't started yet. So I said, why not start after you don't just stop anything, regardless of what level you're at, whether you're day one or you're a biohacker, we are going to try and reverse age a little more, right? So keep doing what you're doing. And what we're going to see is even on top of that, let's add some habits that help you get better. Uh, Sheila's asking, what is the best way to fix my deficits? Work with your program uh, or take the new test and work with the app. So the best way is the genomic mastery program where you're going to have a functional genomics pra practitioner hands-on manually mining your data and then hands-on manually walking you through a monthly month, a many month program. So imagine a genetic concierge that is for you as an individual 
building a program that's only for what you need, not for what everyone else needs, based on your genome, based on your existing habits, based on your relationships and your family, like all things considered, right? So that's the best thing you can do. Um, this program is more for like, well, I don't want to go spend money on a program, but I would love to be part of this challenge and get better. And I would love to test and prove that it worked. And now I know that I have a tool that I can use on an annual basis to alert me if there's a problem that I just wasn't aware of. Just like that girl that I said was 38, that internally was 72. She had no idea. She had no idea. She was doing everything right. She was a wellness influencer, right? She was a wellness influencer that has regular lives interviewing all these nutritionists and stuff. She was 72 on the inside. And then we had to figure out why. So that's another very important reason why if, I mean, I know everyone here is a health and wellness enthusiast, right? Loves what you're, you're, you're willing to put time and effort into that. So this is a tool in your toolkit that allows you to establish, here's what's happening in my body today, 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 a true measure and proof of where I'm at. Now I know things are great. Keep doing what I'm doing, right? Things fell off a cliff. I need to figure out what changed. Something happened because epigenetics don't change like that, right? So it's a very good way for you to know because these are pre, pre, pre symptom, right? It's, it's you, there are things that won't show up in blood work. It's the first thing genetics express immediately the same day, right? So today, if I eat a bowl of broccoli and tomorrow I eat a bowl of a beef, I'm going to have different genetic expression, right? Blood work and all these, they, they don't work. Yes, there's some truth to like, you're going to influence your blood work, but really we're checking quarterly. Your epigenetics is like a measure in time today. And so it's a massive warning sign for here's a red flag. We need to dive deep and investigate what's going on, right? Uh, Gail Loeb is asking, seeing a change in cognitive focus, concentration, word finding. We need to, what, will epigenetic tests give better idea of sources? So Gail's starting to see a change. So she's taken the DNA test and she started to see that her focus is better. Concentration is better. Word finding is better. The, what the epi, yes, the epigenetics will help with that. We're going to see uh, expression. So first of all, it sounds like you're on a healing journey. So you're probably going to find that your epigenetic age is slightly under what it should be, or sorry, slightly over what it should be. And our goal is to get it better, right? Um, so, and yes, epigenetics will kind of speak to what's going on on the inside. There's a lot of people that are coming out of, you know, a two year battle with some viruses that cause brain fog and Gail, you might be one of those people, right? So uh, there's a lot of considerations to be made, but if you're getting better, you're already seeing that the recommendations that were made to you are driving outcomes. Let's go through like a three month crash course of a longevity group project where we all work on this together and get better, right? So uh, it looks like we've been through all the questions. Um, I want to thank you guys for staying on with us and joining and learning. This was to me very exciting because, you know, it's, it's only because we, we have a bit of change at the company and Tracy's running the show now that I'm actually able to work on things like this. And it's, it's things that you've always wanted, things that I've always wanted to do. We just didn't have the time to be straightforward. And now we do. So it's going to be incredible spending the next few months with you and working as a group. And I'm going to do these things too. And we're going to work together uh, and just seeing the, the, the change and the outcomes. Uh, Ethel asks, I can buy a single test does not believe my address is correct. Um, do you want to maybe... Uh, if you're maybe... having any issues with shipping or ordering, if you reach out to client care at the DNA company.com, um, we can help you through that if there's any sort of technical error. So client care at the DNA company.com. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, I'll just type it in the chat for everybody. Um, so yeah, any issues ordering uh, Ethel email will will help you hands on, right? Um, then we'll make sure that they our client care team knows. Uh, that tomorrow they may be questions around this. So we'll, we'll make sure that they're ready to support you. So this is what we came to share with you guys that I've been through this journey. We get so many questions. It's very difficult for me to work with people one-on-one -on -one and help everybody, you know, and 
my thinking was, well, we can very easily start helping people and let's start sending people emails and saying, here's a tip for you. Here's a, like, and then, you know, me and B were sitting down, Beth, who you can see here, who we affectionately call B, by the way, even though it's spelled Beth. Um, and we just said, why don't we just do this for everybody? Let's just put this challenge together. Let's do it. We're going to work with everybody. I'm, I'm freed up now. Let's do this and let's actually make the change. And not only that, let's measure it and let's prove it. And let's like, you know, like Dirk said in the chat, this is healthcare, right? This is what it should be. And if our group can come together and prove this, this is why we also, you know, extended the discount on a brand new product because we want to do whatever we can to get you into this proof. We can show the world that within three months we can change lives, right? And, and, and I know because for me, my eczema where I couldn't open my left eye it was sealed shut. That's how bad the inflammation was. One month, it was gone. So I know when you start going down that healing path and you start fixing how fast your body comes back, how fast things heal, right? Your body is resilient. Now, the older you are, the longer it takes, but that's a consideration. Now we know we have to do something a little bit different for you, right? So, but the body is designed to bounce back. It's designed to fight chronic disease, not maintain it, right? But if you only focus on the symptom of the disease, it's very hard to move beyond that so with that uh so st stay tuned anyone that's registered here you're going to be notified about challenges now some of you uh dropped off already but for those of you that are still here i'm going to give you a challenge tonight i'm going to give you a challenge tonight and that challenge is simple one of the big factors in today's reality that drives poor um sort of a poor terrain inflammatory state is anxiety, stress, right? And the way we experience that is different. Some of you have already learned about your unique genetics and how we um, we process things differently and some feel extremes and some plow through things like a warrior, right? All in all, all of those people are experiencing it, especially in today's context where there's so much stimulus. So what I'd like you to practice is first understand that the part of your brain that allows you to experience anxiety is the same part of your brain that allows you to experience gratitude. If you look at any ancient culture, if you look at anyone that deals with longevity, they'll tell you what a powerful tool gratitude is. Why? Because you cannot do both of these things at the same time. That part of the brain is occupied. So what I'd like you to do tonight, if you wanna join me, I'm gonna do the same. Find something to be thankful for and give thanks. Sit there on the edge of your bed, spend a few minutes, speak to a higher power, whatever that is, you know, whether it's your future self, whether it's a, whether it's a God that you believe in, a creator, whatever you believe in, speak to that and give gratitude for something, something that you should have already given gratitude for, gratitude for that you missed, right? Do that one thing tonight. And in this next coming few days, whenever you're feeling anxious or you're feeling anxiety, pause, pause and focus on gratitude. It's not a switch that gets flipped, but within minutes, you can shift the way your brain feels, right? You can get stuck in anxiety. You can dwell, you can experience shell shock. You can ruminate, you can stay there for hours, or you can adopt this new tool that without a pill, without medication allows you to move on. Right. And it not only allows you to move on, but move on into a much healthier state. Right. Gratitude is a very, very healthy place to be. This is a longevity state. So do that one thing tonight. You know, sit on the edge of your bed, find that thing, um, and give thanks for it truly from your heart. Truly experience the feeling of gratitude. And in this coming next few days, anytime you feel anxiety, anxious, stress, Pause to give thanks and truly give thanks. Drop down to your knees. Give your, put your ego aside and give yourself up to something more powerful than you, than you and give thanks and see what that does to your brain. See what that does to your body. The difference that it does, what has, starts happening to your hormones and your neurochemicals and the signals to your body in terms of how healthy you're actually meant to be. You'll see it and you'll feel it. So with that, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, great to be with you this evening. Excited to get started and excited to see who's going to win. We'll see you at the end of this too. All right. Good night, guys.
Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. We'll be sending out the replay email tomorrow with all of the details, um, any discount codes that you might need, or any other ways to um, take part in the challenge if you're not interested in tracking your biological age. Um, if you want to see some previews of the app that you get along with the DNA Jing tests just to help you track your progress, get actionable insights and things like that. Um, we've got Julius, who is our webinar coordinator tonight. He's got some imagery up that um, you can have a look at before you log off tonight. Again, thank you guys so much. If you do have any questions after we send out the replay, you'll be able to reply to that email, which reaches our client care team, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you so much.